to talk to you more about speciation. And speciation, there are many different kinds. And in your um, chapter three, which is a really big chapter, um, they talk about different types of geographic isolation, meaning that maybe one species somehow gets split apart and over time um, turns into two different species. Then I want to tell you an easy way to remember the difference between allopatric and sympatric speciation. In allopatric speciation, somehow this one species gets split up apart. So I always think of allopatric apart. Let's say a river, um, some flooding happens and a giant flood happens. And then a river is created in between two different frog species and so the frog species can't get back together anymore. Um, this happens with land animals, it's very common. So um, you know, still this takes multiple, multiple thousands of years to happen, but they are separated for so long, they're apart for so long, that if they came back together, they would not be able to produce fertile living offspring. So then that's when speciation occurs. Sympatric speciation is something that happens when they're in the same environment. Sympatric, same. You can think of it in that way. And this is a lot to do with genetics. Um, an example would be um, like a fern species seem prone to sympatric speciation by doubling their chromosome number. Another thing that's called uh, quadruploidy, I think if you've taken a regular biology class you would learn that chickens can sometimes be quadruploidy, which means that they have four type, four uh, sets of chromosomes instead of our regular two sets of chromosomes. So those quadruploidy um, chickens could not mate with the other chickens and so they can't reproduce and produce fertile living offspring. So they'd be considered two different species. So usually this is a genetic issue where um, some are 4N instead of 2N and then they can't reproduce with each other.